On the phone is SUNY's father, John. John, congratulations to you. Has it sunk in yet? It's starting to. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it is. So what was it like to see SUNY on that podium holding an Olympic gold medal in Tokyo for you? Oh, my God. It was crazy because, you know, I have never shed a tear of, of, of all the time that SUNY has ever won any event, but... I almost shed a tear this time. <laughs> oh, I think I think we all did. John, SUNY's coach said something that I wanted to share with folks at home. It stuck out to me today. He said, too much of the conversation has been about one person. I thought that SUNY was this good all the time. I feel best that everybody else got to see it. She finally got to show it. Going into this competition, Simone was the favorite to capture gold in this event. But with her withdrawing from the all-around, some say it opened up an opportunity for your daughter. Has she felt like she was in Simone's shadow? And how do you feel about that? You know, all I know is that Simone and SUNY, they're a team, their teammates. And she was their captain, and and Suni looked up to her, and Suni, I, I always believed in her. She always ha, ha, always have proved everybody that she could do it, and she has done very well in all their events. And I I have confidence in her all the time, so I believe in her. Well, it was remarkable to watch her performance and that uneven bar routine, one of the most difficult we have seen. I'm curious as a parent, as a fan watching it, it's terrifying because it's so difficult. As a parent, what is it like to watch your child uh, do these difficult stunts? You know, to be honest with you, I, I do feel really nervous inside, but I never, I never try to show it because I, I know that every time I watch Sunita, and she looked at my wife, and then she gets so nervous. But when she looked at me, she feels very confident. So I always try to keep a very confident face. But deep down inside, you know, it's your child. You've got to be nervous. Well, she's so talented. There is so much discussion right now, John, about the mental health of these elite athletes and the pressure they face, particularly in the Olympics on the world stage. How's SUNY dealing with that? And despite the weight that she is carrying, is she having fun out there? I always tell her to have fun. Um, but I know that she do feel very, very, very heavy that she have to prove to everybody she have to Make sure that she do this for everybody and always tell her not to worry about nobody else. Just worry about herself. Just go out there, do it, have fun, do it for yourself because you already proved to the world that you can get there. So I told her that the night before she went out there and I know she's still worried, but for, for some good reason, she pulled it off. So she must uh, at least listen to me a little bit. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, she's on the top of the top of the world, top of her game. I know this gold was not just a personal achievement. She is the first Hmong American to make the U.S. Olympic team. What does this win mean for the Hmong American community in Minnesota and elsewhere to see her on this stage? In St. Paul, Minnesota, I mean, it means the world, but, you know, representing the Hmong American and represent the Hmong all over the world. I mean, it's the first ever for anybody to make it this far and to win the gold. I mean, my phone went, went crazy, not just from the people in the United States, but all over the world. And I, it's, I, I still can't believe that that happened. Well, I know it was difficult for you and your family and so many fans who have rooted her on as she has trained to not be there in Tokyo to cheer her on in person, but I'm sure you've got lots of plans for when she heads home from Tokyo. John, congratulations to you and your family and especially to SUNY. Uh, Olympic gold in the gymnastics all around for Team USA and your daughter. Well done. Thank you. Thank you.